Hey, what's up guys? My name is Echerno and welcome back to my OpenGL series. So, we've been, over the last few episodes, over the last few weeks, over the last few months, whatever, we've been learning about all of these basic OpenGL concepts. And now what we actually have is the ability to, like, put all those concepts together and actually do something a little bit more complicated. And that's where we're going to, in the future, very, very soon, start getting into things like batch rendering and materials, 3D scenes, that kind of stuff. And in order to facilitate that, I really want to spend some time and to actually get this application in order. Because what we have right now with our OpenGL application is really just all of... We've got a bunch of API kind of classes that we've created for things like vertex buffers, vertex arrays, index buffers, textures, that kind of stuff. And then we've just got this application.cpp file, which is just kind of a bunch of just calls to OpenGL stuff. But what I really want to do is have the ability for us to have different tests, so to speak. So different kind of areas of applications, different scenes that we that we can actually cycle through. And each one of those tests or scenes is meant to actually demonstrate or just show one concept working. So basically what I'm, what I'm saying is that I want us to be able to have like a scene that is just an example of batch rendering. A scene that is just a, an example of a very, very simple like uh, material being used or something like that, right? A scene that is like some complex shader or whatever, or even something that is just a scene that is as simple as, hey, this is how you change the clear color in OpenGL. And this is like some IAM GUI controls for being able to change that. Here it is rendering, right? What I want to do is create like a library of examples of all of these different concepts. And what we need to kind of do first is to create an application that is capable of doing that. And the way that we're going to set that up is very, very simple. We're just going to have a menu in I am GUI that shows all of the available scenes or tests or examples. And we're just going to be able to pick one. When we click it, it opens the scene. We can see the scene and all of the I am GUI controls that are associated with that scene there. Then we can click the return button to go back to that menu and it will basically just destroy that scene. So every time we go into a new scene, it loads everything required for that scene. And when we exit the scene, it destroys everything. So if we can, if we keep going back and forth, it reloads everything from scratch and thus also shows that all of that cleanup is working correctly um, and uh, all of that kind of stuff. Okay. So that's the plan um, because what I, what I actually thought about doing, I'm just gonna have to uh, drink some tea first. What I thought about doing was just getting into batch rendering, like I said last time, and most people I think, um, I gave you guys the choice of materials or batch rendering. You went with batch rendering, which was the correct choice, by the way, because that's what I would have done anyway, I must confess. Anyway, um, so uh, instead of doing that, which I wanted to do that today, but I thought like I looked through this main file and there's so much junk everywhere. I want to basically have an example of batch rendering, a nice clean file and uh, every kind of file that is an example will be like an instance of a class. Well, it won't be an instance of a class. It will literally be a separate class, which just has like on update, on render, on init, that kind of, those kind of functions. So that, so that the actual code for showing, you know, how to set up batch rendering is as minimal as possible. And that way it's going to be really easy for you guys to follow along. First of all, if you don't have the current code, you can do that by supporting this series on patreon.com forward slash the channel. Every single episode, the code is committed at, is, is committed as a separate commit to that, to, uh, to a GitHub page, github.com slash like the Cherno slash OpenGL to get access to that. You need to uh, be a patron, um, it helps support the series. And also you get access to every single episode commit by commit, which is really, really useful. So that we're going to like, uh, continue on from that code. So if you want to follow along without having to type everything up or you haven't watched the other episodes, that's the best way to do it. But we're just going to start refactoring this code out into test classes so that we actually can set up a bit of a test framework and uh, facilitate all of that kind of, you know, separate examples of each OpenGL concept that we um, learn moving on from this series. So let's just jump into some code enough talking and see what we can do. Okay, so looking through this application class, I mean, it's pretty big. If I just run my code right now so that we can see where we actually uh, left this thing on. And you can see that we basically just have two kind of uh, channel logos rendering. That was the last episode where we talked about rendering multiple things at once. Um, and we have all of this. this is a great example. Again, something that would be awesome to have in a test, but not something I just want to have in our main file because it clutters everything up. So let's start thinking about how we want to make this test framework. The first thing I want to do is inside this source uh, folder, I'm just going to make a new um, item. In fact, I'm just going to make a new folder first called tests. And then inside there, I'm going to make a file called test.h. And this is just going to serve as the kind of base class, I guess, for all the test stuff. I'm also going to put it into a namespace called uh, test, 
just so that we can kind of have that isolated from the actual OpenGL API and all that kind of stuff. And then I'm gonna just call it class uh, test. And we're gonna have a bunch of public stuff. I'm not sure if we'll have private stuff. Um, but basically we're gonna have a constructor, which I'll just leave blank like this, a virtual uh, destructor over here, just like that. Um, and then I'm going to make some virtual functions here. So we'll probably just have on update, which ideally would run at a fixed kind of frame rate and maybe even take in a delta time here. Um, and then we'll also have a on render, which is kind of meant for rendering. And then I'm gonna actually make one more, which is going to be an on I am GUI render. So this is going to be where um, we're going to draw our I am GUI stuff. So ideally we wanna make this as simple as possible so that in this function that we override in our subclasses, we can just put any kind of I am GUI rendering code um, and it would, would have already called like I'm going to begin and end and that kind of stuff for us. So we can really just be as minimal as possible um, in terms of like, we don't need to make a new window or anything like that. It'll already be all set up for us from where this function actually gets called. So that's basically the basis of this. Now, the way I've set this up is remember because, because I actually want um, the, all of these test classes to kind of be uh, initialized or created when we enter the test and then destroyed when we exit the test, the actual kind of setup code, so the, the kind of creation and destruction code will be in the constructor and the destructor. So that way we can freely have like any kind of stack variables that are kind of tied to the lifetime of our class. Um, like for example, if we wanted to create a vertex buffer, we could just create that as a stack variable like in our actual class scope. And that way we don't have to worry about manual memory management at all because as soon as that class goes out of scope, which more that as soon as that class gets deleted, that, um, vertex buffer that's on the stack will get will go out of scope and thus get destroyed automatically so we don't have to worry about that basically what i'm saying is instead of having like an on init or on destroy function i'm just having a constructor and, and destructor and that way the lifetime of all of our objects in the class is actually tied to the class scope okay so anyway that's basically what we have here and now we can actually start making a test so as an example let's make that clear color test that i talked about so i'm going to make a header file which is just called test clear color. I'm going to start them with the word test. Um, so that way they're nicely kind of ordered and we'll hit add and I'll do the exact same thing for a CPP file. So I'll call it test clear color dot CPP. That's going to include our test clear color dot H and in the head file, I'm going to include, uh, just test dot H. So again, namespace test and then class test clear color and this is going to be uh we we'll probably don't need to maybe i will call it test clear color just because i want the classes nicely named but it's pretty obvious that it's a test anyway um and then over here we're going to basically override everything so uh we'll grab the constructor we do have a cpp file so i'm not going to implement anything here um constructor and destructor like this i don't need to mark this as virtual or anything like that because the base class is and we're certainly not going to be extending this class um, which is why I'm not marking these methods as virtual either. So we'll have on update float delta time override uh, on render. <coughs> and on I'm going to render override like that. Okay, cool. Looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to pop over to my uh, CVP file, make sure I get that namespace test in there. And then if I go back using Visual Assist, I can just right click on the class and create the method implementations, which will just nicely create all of them really quickly in my CPP file, just like that. Okay, so let's actually set up this test and think about what we need, because we do need some things. Um, the actual uh, color needs to be stored somehow. So I am going to uh, store this. I'm just gonna make it a float array. So I'll just call it float M color. And I know I want four of them like that. Now, so four floats are gonna be our clear color. I might actually call it clear color. Um, in the constructor here, I'm going to initialize that. So clear color. Uh, to something like, um, I guess we should probably do black, but that's boring. So I might just make it like magenta or something. So one zero, actually let's make it like a nice kind of blue. Um, 0 0.2 for red, 0 0.3 for green, 0 0.8 for blue, and we'll go with one for alpha. Okay, cool. So there's our clear color set up. Um, inside on render, I'm gonna do my GL call GL clear color, which sets that clear color to uh, clear color zero, one, two, and three, as you might expect, just like this. 
and then we'll call gel clear with the gel color buffer bit. No need for any kind of depth buffer stuff here. I will include uh, gel slash glue to get all the open gel stuff in. And in fact, maybe I can just include the renderer. Probably don't need to include um, that. Now, our source directory isn't actually in our include directory. So let's set that up. Right click and then properties. Over here, I'm just gonna add source as an include directory into my CC++ general edition, additional include directories like that for all configurations. That way we can just include render like this and everything will be fine. Um, that, that's the kind of stuff that contains, um, I believe our, yeah, that, that includes glue, so we don't need to include glue. And also it should have the GL call macros. Okay, brilliant. So there we go. There's our clear color rendering. That's pretty much it. I mean, I don't need to destroy anything, but the only thing we actually allocated here was just an array that is, again, on the stack, so we don't need to worry about destroying that manually. Um, and everything else I think is fine. So let's collapse these, we don't need on update. And on I'm GUI render, we'll set that up in a minute because I actually do want to, um, in fact, let's just set that up now. So uh, if we go to, uh, if we include I'm GUI, just include, I'm GUI slash I'm GUI. Then we can just do I'm GUI uh, color four or some color edit four or color picker four. I don't know what the difference is. What is the difference? Color edit. Uh, did the color edit functions have a little color preview square? Okay, so color edit is probably what we want. Color edit four. Um, and we'll just do clear color as a label and then we'll just pass in that clear color pointer. And there we go. That's all we need to do. Really, really simple stuff. And now we should be able to see our clear color and also edit it. So that's my test. You can see kind of what I mean by setting up a test framework. It's so easy to see kind of what happens in the initialization, the destruction, and then actually rendering it. It's really clean, keeps everything isolated and separate and lets us test everything really easily the way that we actually want to. Okay, cool. So now if we go into application, um, there's all this stuff that I don't care about anymore. So what I'm actually going to do is just remove it. Um, it is in version control, so I don't need to worry about, you know, losing any code and then not getting it back ever. If I want it back, I can always get it back. So let's just go over here and remove all of this code. Um, I'm also going to go into here and I'll drag this comment out as well. And basically just remove everything. Okay, so we don't know, we definitely want to keep like the I'm GUI initialization, the render initialization, but everything else like this stuff can just go away. We'll keep blending on as well. And there we go. Okay, cool. So really, really simple now. Um, I'll get rid of all these comments because it's pretty obvious what this stuff does anyway. And now let's set up our test. So as an easy example, just to test this out, I can uh, include, first of all, let's just include our test, uh, test slash test clear color. And if I go down here, um, I'm just going to make a test clear color test. Um, whoops, I'll put that in the test namespace like that. I could using the namespace, but I'm not going to at this point. Um, we're going to uh, render the actual test. So we'll do on update with delta time zero for now because we don't have any of that set up. Um, we'll do on render. And then once we actually start the I'm GUI frame, uh, we're going to do a test dot on I'm GUI render like that. Okay, um, looks pretty good to me. Let's just hit a five and see what happens. Okay, so check this out. We have that really nice blue color here. We've got our I am GUI stuff. I'm just gonna resize this a little bit. You can see that's our clear color. That's what it's set to. I can adjust it just by doing this. I can also bring up a color picker and actually change it to any color I want. And as you can see here, it actually changes the color of the background because that's what our clear color is set to. So you can see uh, how cool that is. Cool. So anyway, that's the basis of how I want to set up all this test framework stuff. Now, what I'm going to do next time in the next episode is actually set up a menu so that instead of opening a test straight away, which we could also have the ability of doing potentially via a command line argument or something, but in general, instead of opening just a clear color test or whatever straight away, I actually want to open a menu in which I can select from any number of tests. And then when I click on a test, it actually creates it and opens it. And then if I destroy, or if I go back from that menu, so we'll add like a little back button or a return button or something like that, and just an arrow. Um, if we click that and we're in the clear color test, for example, it should destroy that, like completely delete that instance of that class and that object um, and go back to our test menu where we can pick something else. So that's the plan. Now, what I want you guys to do for homework, here we go, just giving you guys a bit of a homework task. 
uh, try and implement that yourselves. Um, go ahead and make a test menu, make more than just one test. I've just made a clear color test. What you should do is go back through all the episodes and see if you can make a test for like textures or just a quad with a certain vertex color, which you can customize, or maybe a quad with a uniform that you can customize as well using I'm GUI. Make all of these tests, add them to a test menu, and then share your solution in the comments below or on discord.com. Uh, sorry, if you go to the channel.com slash discord, you can join my discord server. There's an open gel. No, there's a graphics um, channel where you can talk about stuff like this and share your solutions there. Um, and uh, yeah, just have a go at doing that yourselves. And then I'll show you my solution uh, next week or in whenever the next episode ends up coming out. So anyway, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can, uh, you can help support the series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. As always, all of the source code is uploaded onto a GitHub repository, which you get access to if you support the series. So definitely check that out. And also you'll get a bunch of other cool rewards. Um, and uh, as always, huge thank you to all of my lovely supporters who make this series possible. Um, I'm going to prioritize this series from now on over the C++ series because we've covered a lot of stuff in the C++ series and the OpenGL series is kind of lacking. So next week we're going to finish off this test stuff and then the week after that or the episode after that, maybe I'll even do multiple episodes a week, who knows, hopefully, I'm hoping, um, we will uh, move on to doing the batch renderer and then 3D stuff eventually. So yeah, I'm really excited for the future of the series. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.